friend, and now I'd like to introduce uh, Yelena Cipria Mironov. And we've been working with Yelena as uh, open access uh, coordinator in Estonia for I don't know how many years already. And uh, Yelena has been very successful uh, uh, advocating for open access in Tartu University. She's uh, uh, special collections development manager in Tartu University Library. And here she'll speak about uh, open access to learning materials, textbooks, and also open access to monographs, because Tartu University Press is one of the partners uh, at uh, OAPEN. So, um, I'm very pleased to share our experience on the AFL General Assembly. And uh, at the beginning um, of my speech, I want to start from interesting fact. Uh, so, in uh, 1829, Estonian scientists, rector, and professors of Tartu University. Um, Friedrich Parrot had traveled to Armenia to clean Mount Ararat. And uh, Friedrich Parrot reached the summit Mount Ararat uh, with the help of Hachatura Babian, who was an Armenian writer and national public figure of the early 19th century. Impressed with uh, Abavian um, uh, thirst of knowledge, Parrot arranged for a Russian state scholarship for Abavian to study at the University of Tartu. And the years in Tartu were very fruitful for Abavian, and later he had written novels, stories, scientific composition, and textbooks as well. Um, a lot of time passed, and today in University of Tartu we are trying to conquer the barriers to research information contact. And uh, Estonian language digital university textbooks is a project in University of Tartu Library. And it has come to a successful and has brought up and open access ideas towards academic book publishing. The Estonian textbooks market is quite poor because of the characteristics of Estonia. Today we hear that uh, Lithuania is quite little country with population of 3 million, so Estonia is a very small country with one and a half million of population. And usually in our country, only one edition of a textbook is put on the market, which will uh, quickly sell out of print, and the second edition uh, does not appear until years later. So meanwhile, students heavily depend uh, on library, which can only cover 20% of the book requirements for each course in the university, and which means uh, that 80% uh, of the students either need to wait in the library line. So students tend to rent a book from a library and copy whole book in the Xerox machine, and it can be said that is um, the main uh, cause of the illegal uh, copy issue. So out of these all options, university libraries are the main and the first source where students turn to when in need of Estonian textbooks. Fulfilling students' need for textbooks which are sold out of print is the main goal of Estonian language textbooks project. And when starting, starting with the project in Estonia, the main goal was not to bring students away from the printed materials, but rather to fulfill the lack of the availability of these textbooks. And what is the difference between e-textbooks and the paper textbooks? The e ideal e-textbooks offers much more possibilities uh, than a regular paper, paper publication. And e-textbooks feature a search uh, in the text function. It is easy to mark, copy uh, the text, and uh, it is um, Rather, can use uh, an electronic bookmark, and uh, uh, they can be used various multimedia possibilities. 
And of course, the quality of e-textbooks e must be such that it complies with all requ equipment set of the printed textbooks in every respect. And it must be structured systematically and peer-reviewed, of course. So, until now, now, the textbooks writing and publishing has been based mainly on contract between uh, academics and publishers. And in case of Estonia, the Estonian Ministry of Education and Science, as well as the University of Tartu, both uh, have supported publishing of the textbooks with funding. But without any conditions for price, or for copy, or distribution. So that means that government is paying three times for the same book. At first, the authors are usually faculty members whose uh, salary comes from the university budget, and actually all major universities in Estonia are directly or indirectly uh, funded mainly by the government. Uh, the second, funding publishing uh, by paying entirely or partly for the printing, editing, author's fee, and center. And the third, a university library will buy the textbooks. And libraries' books buying budget consists uh, consist of universities and government funds. So, Estonia teeny market of textbooks give to the government and the university theoretically significant chance to promote open access, or at least the free access to the university members inside the university net. Talk to university library discussed various options of how to provide Estonian language textbooks to students. Uh, and the main options of building a platform was considered where the collection will be separate and easily accessible. And in uh, 2008, Tartu University Library decided uh, to choose a uh, library platform where books uh, are displayed page by page and additional security requirements can be applied as well. And Tartu University Library textbooks collection on eBrary is uh, only available in the Tartu University network. So, with password and uh, usernames. But today, in addition uh, to eBrary platform, we host open access e-textbooks collection in our institutional repository on this space. And where the number of items has been significantly grown, uh, in the past couple of years. Uh, about one and a half years ago, there was uh, only 40 uh, textbooks, and today it is 80. So it is really uh, significantly grown. Uh, uh, so I'll be back. So we are also offering an authors an opportunity to receive a feedback. If any readers desire to suggest ways to improve the study materials, and many professors uh, has actually shown an extreme interest uh, uh, to publish first edition in the institutional repository on this space, and then based on the comments and feedback, in charge the second edition. We are offering professors statistics about the usage of the digital study materials. And in addition, by publishing sold-out textbooks in digital format, the library is guaranteeing uh, that uh, every student can receive uh, access to study materials uh, that they need in daily basis. In general, library is uh, willing to help university authors in order to make the textbooks publishing more effective and more successful and by that improve the higher education in our university. Negotiation and submission process in the University of Tartu goes as follows. Professors of the university are offered an opportunity to submit uh, the published and unpublished textbooks to the eBerry platform or to provide open access to the e-textbooks or institutional repository. Submitting process are asked to fill out a questionnaire where they identify general information about the published textbooks, for example, printing and copy paste restrictions and other comments. And then the digital textbooks coordinator fills the metadata information and submits the textbooks to library 
or to institutional repository for publishing. The biggest challenges has been received book files from publishers. And even this, uh, the, if uh, the publisher has uh, not limitation on publishing, they either do not give out the files or would like to charge uh, for giving this to us. Considering that we are paying for authors for the book license and we cannot afford paying for the publishers as well, at least not the price they're asking for. At the same time, we must admit that there have been very many publishing companies who have been very agreeable and operated quickly when they heard about our e-textbooks collection. And of course, one of the main questions we received from authors was if they get paid and how much. At first, we were trying to take an approach by asking authors themselves uh, how much of the compensation for giving their textbooks uh, into our collection they would like to receive. And only few actually um, could name the price. And after offering them a reasonable price, many of them found that it is too little and gave the book us for free. At some point, of course, our authors started to ask what is the basis of compensa compensation is and uh, it turned out uh, to be necessary to establish a sound system in our library uh, that can, uh, the system that can be applied to all uh, books. Uh, and uh, um, since uh, most of the textbooks has been bought to the library, we established a compensation system that uh, uh, would cover three paper book prices. For example, if library uh, would, uh, if library paper book was uh, uh, bought uh, for 20 euros, uh, so the author will receive a compensation for a simple usage license for 60 euros. And so far it seems uh, that the well-established compensation system has been accepted by the most of authors and we um, have now received many complaints about it. So currently there are almost uh, 100 Estonian language textbooks in the Ibery collections and uh, mostly the authors are from our university. And uh, almost 80 are open access in institutional repository. E-textbooks uh, uh, are from different categories and the statistics of the e-textbooks usage has shown that uh, certain highly uh, popular paper book that have been borrowed in the library is also in the top of digital use. And uh, actually today we feel that it's very positive uh, that the number of textbooks with open access in institutional repository is almost equal, equal of the number of e-textbooks in eBerry platform. So all Estonian language e-textbooks, of course, are accessible via homepage and uh, via our OPAC catalog, Esther. After three years operation of the collection, various findings and issues appeared. And one of the major issues that we had to deal with was copyright. When starting a project, library workers were not uh, well aware about potential questions and problems uh, that rose from copyright laws. And actually authors themselves um, uh, were not very aware of what kind of rights they really have. And publishers are not willing to make their titles available for electronic publishing because they are afraid of uh, losing the potential revenue from sales to students. And uh, establishing the collection has uh, given us an opportunity uh, to educate uh, all parts involved with the project. And as always, every positive development brings um, different problems, like you can see here. It is, uh, of course, a potential cases of plagiarism and access uh, of uh, special needs students, for example. But still, after comparing the positive and negative uh, aspects of e-textbooks, uh, the positive aspects uh, more than overweight the negative ones. 
and uh, because e-textbooks save resources, it's easily accessed, it uh, offers a flexible options to modify the text, and e-textbooks would resolve the issue of a chronic lack of textbooks in our country. Besides uh, the need, this project has uh, also additional cultural value. Through so the project, it becomes clear that all small language can be benefit. Uh, and uh, now, a small language limited textbooks market become a bonus rather than minus. So, in general, this type of project would be good for countries with the small languages. And the other reason behind it could also be a national pride, because the authors could have uh, left uh, felt uh, uh, that um, it, it was their obligation to contribute uh, and to preserve the Estonian language academic materials. Uh, and Tartu University Library has guaranteed in a contract signed with authors uh, uh, that the long-term preservation of the textbooks will be guaranteed. Which also means that uh, authors can be sure that even if their own version of the textbook's uh, work is not accessible for a long over time, uh, they have a place where they could retrieve the work. So, uh, to recognize uh, the worth of uh, compilation of textbooks for higher education institutions and the translation of some textbooks in Estonia, the University of Tartu uh, were modified to include an additional equipment. And indeed, indeed uh, textbooks has become a valuable part in academic CV. That means uh, that an original textbook is considered equal in level to international research publication, uh, and the translation of the book is equal to a research publication. Um, the University Library has been one of the main supporters of open access initiative in Estonia. And when starting with the project, uh, we were hoping um, to have uh, entirely open textbooks collection. So in the long run, as you see, it might be a beneficial to migrate or develop from close institutional collection to a national wide open access collection in order to receive funding uh, from government, and we believe that all government-supported publications should be national-wide and open access, and all university-supported publications should be open access with no limitation for university use. And currently, our library is working towards the last goal. The University of Tartu Press has also new directions to open access academic publishing and has started to offer a new opportunities for university authors. The University of Tartu Publishing Council highly recommends authors who receive funding for publishing from the university to publish an electronic version of their books in the Estonian uh, University e-textbooks collection as well. Um, the University of Tartu does not make electronic publication date oblig obligatory, so uh, the authors can uh, uh, choose when they give their books to the electronic collection. And of course, taking into account that it might be published first on paper uh, and later um, by the electronic publishing. Tartu University Press, uh, as you see, has recently joined OAPEN, and it is the result of uh, library and university press cooperation. On this basis, there is a strong need uh, to educate involved members of various subject publishing committees, as well as journal and textbook authors, uh, who applied for university support, and of course, rather uh, other interest groups on open access issue. So e-textbooks project has received national, a larger national attitude that we had expected at the first. And the textbooks project already is a starter point of uh, open access academic 
publishing in our country. And we believe that in future, uniform open access policy in Estonia could also be reachable and necessary next step. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Elena. We have time for some questions. So please, do you have any questions, comments? So we had publisher's perspective on open access publishing. We had library perspective on open access publishing. Uh, do you have any? Yes, please, Marat. Uh, how do you uh, pay for the authors and who pay? Actually, it's from yes. library. For, for electronic resources. Uh, the compensation system, as I said, we paid uh, for uh, three book fees. Uh, so uh, it is from library budget. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a almost library project, the textbooks project. Is. Who defines if it's a price? Uh, as I said, if, uh, for example, the library was uh, uh, bought paper edition from 20 euros, so we paid author 60. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm Joffrey from Maui. Uh, I suppose that you are also targeting books which were published here before that you are already in the printed form. Yes. Do you digitize them? Yes. Uh, most of uh, the books which are in this collection are digitized mm -hmm. and uh, we make e-text books. But uh, the recent equipment that came from the, uh, our publishing console, so we are now hoping and we have uh, already some books with, uh, uh, with already a digital e-books format. Now, do you approach the publishers, the previous publishers, for their permission to have them digitized? It's a, it's a negotiation, so we uh, must negotiate with authors and publishers, and if it's uh, yes, so we can publish it on eBay on, or institutional repository, or, is it, or if it's a no answer, so we don't take this book for publishing. Okay, thank you. I think I got you correctly that uh, uh, the librarians or in that specific case your library you are helping uh, the authors to publish their books and so and you are helping the our students <laughs> eh? so and of course we must uh, uh, to negotiate with our authors and uh, we are uh, very pleased that um, uh, through three years authors are willing to cooperate with us and uh, uh, agree to giving us the, their book files. And so it's a big job. Yeah, okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to be clear about this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My question is, by textbook you meant the books that the students use for their courses, right? Yes. But from time to time the textbooks will be changed by the, by the teachers and by the professors. Mm -hmm. So should you uh, keep these uh, books on your platform and add a replacement by the new ones, or you keep both? This is the first question. Uh, the second, are you sorting the books by course numbers, by courses and topics? Uh, actually, we have a. Uh, uh, I'm starting from last question. So, actually, we have an e-learning platform in our uh, in our university, like Moodle or Blackboard, or uh, and so uh, the um, uh, the teachers or professor they put a link uh, to these platforms uh, where the book, if it's from eBury, the uh, eBury, and if from this page they use a link. So we don't make any categories. Uh, the teachers categorize themselves then. So do you replace the old text? No. The new? no. The, uh, we only mark that it is first or second edition. So. 
question is related to copyright issues. And you said you have some problems with the copyright. How did you solve this problem? Changing your copyright law or just negotiating? No, we, at first, uh, we educate uh, the uh, authors as librarians and we trying to educate uh, our authors and professors and uh, of course we are uh, always uh, in contact with our university uh, lawyers who is helping us if it's any case of problem. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I, and I think it's not exclusive, of course, because uh, uh, we have a separate um, license uh, for. Uh, authors and uh, we have uh, uh, and we have a contract with publishers so uh, um, it's not exclusive yes marika can you help me yeah. you are using two platforms ebrary and this space mm -hmm. and the first question was the requirement for from ebrary to use this um, textbooks only in the campus network or it was a uh, uh, requirements from the other sources. Why do you use only in the uh, campus network, Ibrari textbooks, on Ibrari platform? Uh, Ibrari, yeah? Yes. Ah, yeah. yeah. And the next question... Uh, Marika, you come here, please. <laughs> <laughs> do you have... A, <laughs> what's your opinion about platform, Ibrari and this space? Uh, two points, uh, features, usability and ingestion workflows for authors and publishers. What is your opinion? Uh, of course, uh, as a librarian, my opinion is that uh, that uh, textbooks, of course, the, um, it is better that if they are open access, if students can download, copy, and print, the library platform uh, um, uh, can't... Uh, In other this space is better than the library platform, yeah? Yeah. yeah. No. Marika, help! Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a good, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Only sponsor from Mark. <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank Elena. Your case study is very useful to us because uh, we are also uh, establishing a open access repository in Nepal. So I want to know which uh, you have already been talking about DSpace and other software. We are planning in DSpace. Is it possible to change if we don't like DSpace in later phase to other software? And other question is the copyright issues in Nepal. Copyright is not so much tight, but as the uh, repository is internationally access and it will matter if the copyrighted materials put in this repository. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say that Irina is more competent person to answer so the first question. Answering your first question, migrating from the space into other repository software, I don't think it should be a problem because you can export only metadata. So it's additional workload for you, so probably you should decide before, before you start, uh, you should decide which software you should be using. But if, in case you want to switch, it's possible and it's, uh, it's a bit of work, but it's, it's, it's not complicated. And speaking about copyright regulations, uh, so if, um, and I may need Teresa's help, who is not here, that's why I say, well, I, I, I think uh, uh, you operate in Nepal, so you, you are subject to Nepalese copyright law. Uh, and if uh, your copyright law allows you to do certain uh, actions, then you should follow that copyright law. In case uh, 
we are not 100% sure about copyright permissions. Uh, and even if you are 100% sure, it's always good if you have so-called takedown notice. So you can say, uh, uh, if uh, like on your repository description like about page, you can say, if uh, someone feels that uh, content in this repository violates someone's copyright, so if you're an author, if, and if your copyright has been violated by this repository, let us know. And we'll uh, uh, take uh, this item from repository collection. It's also good when you start your repository. It's also good to have uh, repository policy, which says that uh, it's the responsibility of an author to, that also guarantees that this material uh, doesn't infringe anyone's copyright. So it's not responsibility of repository, it's responsibility of an author. So in case uh, uh, someone uploads to repository uh, plagiarized material, for example, it's not responsibility of repository, it's responsibility of that person who uploaded it. So US repository would uh, delete this record from public view, and it would be between and also, and also who plagiarized the paper to so down uh, those issues. Uh, it's uh, three o'clock as far as I see, so we can thank uh, our great speakers.